Right. Uh, good morning once again, uh, good people. Let us carry on with our lesson, uh, grade nine uh, mathematics. And of course, please uh, feel free at any time to ask any questions if you have, uh, pri primarily in the chat, or you can also use the mic. You can raise up your hand. This lesson is brought to you by the STEM Digital School, which is presented by Africa Teen Geeks. And once again, my name is Hendrik Makaneta. And of course, today I will be focusing on the volume. Yesterday, we looked uh, broadly at the surface area of uh, prisms, in particular the cubes, as well as the, the rectangular prisms. Uh, and we have also looked a bit at the triangular uh, prism. Now, the key concepts of today are volume, as well as, uh, uh, of course, revision of surface areas of cubes, uh, prisms, and cylinders. But the starting point of today will be the volume. Now, if you remember, how do we define a volume? A volume can be simply defined as uh, the area of the base of a prism. If you take the area of the base and then you multiply that with the height of the prism, then you will definitely get a volume. So the volume of a cube uh, is equal to the area of the base multiplied by the height. So you'll recall that yesterday we had a wide range of uh, problems, which consists of uh, uh, the area of the triangle in a case of a rectangular prism uh, or a triangular prism as such. So today I'm focusing on the cube and then we'll come to the rectangular uh, prism. And of course, we are going to ensure that we finalize this debate uh, today in as far as the cube is concerned. Uh, let us ensure that we define the volume of a cube as the area of the base multiplied by, by the height. And of course, the second one is to show you just to show you how the volume of a cube will be found. So this is the cube. I do hope that you have now seen the volume of a cube with uh, the side lengths. And of course, the side lengths will be side times side times side. So S times S times S, which is S cubed. So the volume of a cube is, uh, you, you multiply the side by the side by the side. Remember in a cube, all sides are equal. Therefore, you simply multiply uh, the side by itself. Uh, two times. Right. And of course, we also have the volume of a rectangular prism. And we are defining the volume of the rectangular prism as the area of the base multiplied by the height. So you can see in this case that we are multiplying uh, the length by the breadth. Remember that the, the, the base of a rectangular prism is a, it's a rectangle on its own. So therefore, once you take the area of the base, it means you are taking the area of the rectangle. And we all know by now that the area of any rectangle can be uh, defined as the length multiplied by the breadth. And of course, what is also key is that you multiply this area by the height. So it will be the length multiplied by the breadth, which in turn 
is multiplied by the height. So basically that is how we define the volume of a rectangular prism. And this of course emanates from, <coughs> excuse me, emanates from the chapter that we have started in relation to the 3D uh, shapes or the 3D objects, where we are able to look at uh, the different sides uh, in relation to the cube, uh, in relation to the rectangular prism, the triangular prism, as well as the, the, the cylinder in this case. So we'll also look at the, the volume of the cylinder. But the key question that arises uh, out of everybody's uh, concern is that what do we mean? What, what is this volume? We say that we are calculating a volume, but what do we mean? What is a volume if you have to define a volume? Now, the, the volume can be defined as the amount of space that a 3D object occupies. So, for instance, when we talk about this key weight uh, volume, we are referring to how much space a solid occupies. So, that is the volume. So, the volume of a rectangular prism is defined as you check the space, the space that is occupied by the solid, by the rectangular prism in this case. So the space that's occupied will be the volume. So you look at the length, the breadth, as well as the height. So that's the space that is occupied. So if you are going to uh, uh, buy furniture, for instance, uh, uh, and you want to, let's say, put it in your bedroom, maybe you want to buy a, a bed, you need to also know your calculations. You must understand the area of your bedroom and not just the area or the surface area as such. You must also understand the height because if you are going to buy anything that you need to fit into the room, it must be able to uh, have a volume. So the volume will be that space, how much space any solid can occupy. So it can, it, it can be helpful for you to buy something that cannot be able to fit into your bedroom. But also if you look at the door as well, there are measurements. You need to know that whatever you are buying will, will be able to get into the, the room. You'll be able to occupy the space and the volume and it will be able to stand the time and the, you know when you get it through the door uh, some people have a tendency of buying things and the next thing uh, you know it's, it's too big and it can't fit into a specific place so the volume that is where the volume comes in now we are proceeding to show you the volume of a rectangular prism just by looking at the 3D uh, shape that we have here. The, just like a box, as you can see, we have spoken about this not long ago, uh, where you've got the length uh, followed by the, the height as well as the, the breadth or the width. And we should know by now that when you calculate the volume, it simply means that will be the volume, which is a length multiplied by the breadth, and in turn, you multiply everything by the height. So basically that is the volume of a rectangular uh, prism. Right, uh, I hope that everyone can hear me out there. Uh, all right, thank you very much indeed. Tando, Guvani, I can hear what you're saying. Let me just uh, carry on. We are carrying on now to demonstrate the importance of uh, putting the mic. I hope that I've just changed the, the speaker there. Uh, I hope that you, everyone can hear me now. Can we carry on to do the next uh, slide where I'm going to show you now 
how to find the volume of a triangular prism. Now the volume of a triangular prism uh, is given by the formula. You again calculate the area of the base and in this case the base is a triangle as you know and then you multiply everything by the height. So the area of the base times the height, that's where you find that uh, the area of the base, which is a triangle, we all know that the formula to calculate the area of a triangle is half a base multiplied by the height. So you'll, you'll have the first height. We call it height one, because that is the height of the triangle. So you'll, you'll have the height there of a triangle and you multiply everything by height two. Height two, that is the height of the entire prism. So in a triangular prism, you will have a, a face, which is a triangle. And in that triangle, that small triangle there, you will have the base of the triangle and the height of the triangle. And then you also have the height of the entire triangular prism. In, in certain instances, uh, people distinguish the two heights by showing the height of the a triangle with a small letter H and the height of the prism with a big letter H or capital letter H. So that's how we define or distinguish between the two heights. So there's the height of the triangle, but there's also the height of a prism. So please distinguish between and of course, you can see, I've just tried to demonstrate to you that uh, this is the volume of a triangular prism. And in this case, you can see that you are multiplying half of the base multiplied by the height. And then of course, uh, basically, if you look at the length, the length of that particular uh, triangular prism, that's the actual height of the of the of the of the prism itself. So, in this case, half a base times height, and then you also have the length. Uh, in this case, which stands for for the second height. So that's how we define. Don't confuse the two. This length is actually the height of your 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 triangular prism. And of course, we also look at the volume of the cylinder and as always we also focus on the area of the base and then you always multiply the area of the base and you multiply that with the height so that should be able to give you the actual volume all right so the volume of a cylinder is given by the formula pi r squared multiplied by h so it's pi r squared times h so it's pi r squared multiplied by the height basically the pi r squared is the area of the base remember we have a, the base of a cylinder is a circle so you need to remember that the area of the circle is given by the formula pi r squared and then if you are going to do the volume then you multiply also by the height so the height is very very important. So I'm just going to demonstrate that when you have a cylinder like this, uh, the height obviously will be the, you will be moving from the base uh, to the top. So basically the base of the circle there, right up until the top one, uh, that is what the height means. And the radius, you can see, we all know a radius is a line that uh, starts from the center of the circle to the circumference. So basically this is what we mean when we talk about the base. Uh, in fact, the, the radius as well. So the volume in this case is given by pi r squared h, uh, which is the volume of the, of the cylinder there. Can we now do the following activity? Given the lesson that we have had this, uh, today, can we focus now on calculating the volume of a cylinder? 
where the diameter is given by 10,6 centimeters and the height is 28,7 centimeters. Calculate the volume of a cylinder with a diameter of 10,6 centimeters and the height of 28,7 centimeters. So that we can tell uh, what it is. So remember, I've given you the, if you have a pen and paper there, I've given you the volume already. You should know that the volume of a cylinder is given by the following a, a, a formula then you multiply the, the area of the base and then you multiply that with the height and we now use this uh, formula pi r squared multiplied by h can we do that Right, I'm going to demonstrate to you now that the basic uh, thing to do here is just to invoke the uh, the, the level of uh, for the formula there, which needs to be utilized. And of course, what is important is that the formula is given by the V, uh, which stands for the volume. And we know that uh, V is equal to a pi r squared multiplied by you multiply that with the height so it's pi r squared multiplied by the actual height there so pi r squared times the height so basically that is what we mean a pi r squared multiplied by the height remember the value of pi and uh, the pi there is 22 over 7. So basically, that's what you're going to have there. So you have 22, which is divided by 7, and then you multiply that by the r squared. Remember the radius. So in order to find the radius, you'll have to, to divide 10,6 uh, by, by 2. Remember, that is your... Yes, exactly. Uh, I see Tando saying 3,14, exactly. So uh, pi is 3,14. And then you, you also take uh, the pi, uh, in this case, uh, uh, which is 3,14. And the diameter, remember that the diameter of the circle is 10,6 centimeters. So remember that uh, Right now, we are looking for the radius. And how do you get the radius? Who can tell me how do you get the radius uh, when you are given the diameter? How will you get the radius? And I'm, I'm deliberately asking you this uh, because, of course, I want to test your knowledge of whether you understand the relationship between, between the diameter as well as the radius. So there's a relationship between the two. If you are given the diameter of a circle, then you can be able to use that to find the, the radius. So I've already uh, calculated that. Uh, 3,14 is just as uh, uh, you said, uh, Tandong Gubani is saying uh, the value of pi is 3,14. And of course, we multiply now the pi, which is 3,14, and you multiply that by the radius. Remember, this radius 5,5. .5. In fact, it must be squared. You, you, you know, it's 5,5 .5 squared. Uh, this simply means 5,3 uh, squared. You, you multiply them by itself. Uh, remember that it shall be r squared. So you multiply it by itself. And I see that Tando has already uh, found the answer to be 2,531. Uh, J. Cuba, I see your hand. Let me give you the opportunity to reflect. Uh, 
All right, I don't see your comment. Uh, let me check if you are able to speak. All right, uh, I will just, uh, okay, we will come back to Jay uh, Pam. Remember that uh, what is important here is the, the, the relationship between the diameter and the radius. So the first thing that you need to do is to find your radius. And the radius in this case will be uh, 10, 6 divided by 2, or half of 10, 6. Because remember that the diameter uh, is that line that passes through the circle. So it divides your circle into two, which therefore means that the radius will be half of the diameter because there will be two of those, the radii. One radius plus another radius, they are equal to a diameter. So therefore, in calculating the volume, you will have to use a pi r squared. And I see that, uh, yes, Tandon uh, Gubani, that's the correct calculation there. Uh, you multiply the pi by 5,3 squared. And thereafter, you multiply everything by the height. So remember, when a volume of a cylinder, you multiply the base by the height. And in this case, the height is given. So that is basically what you need to do in order to find the volume. So the volume will be 2,532,7. OK. 532,7 cubic centimeters. So remember, it will be cubic centimeters. Why? Because the radius is 5,3 centimeters. And if you square that, obviously you are going to squ have square centimeters. The height is also in centimeters. So if you multiply centimeter by square centimeter, then the principle of exponents applies where you add the, uh, the exponents, two plus one is three. And therefore you'll have cubic centimeters. So basically that is what you have uh, in relation to the work that we are doing. Right, uh, that's the first one. And of course the second activity, I want us to look at the cuboid, which consists of the length of uh, 0 0,5 uh, meters. So you can see that we have got a cuboid. Remember the cuboid is the rectangular uh, prism. The length is 0 0,5 meters and the breadth is uh, 40 centimeters and the height, the height is uh, 21 centimeters. So can we calculate the volume of this cuboid given the fact that the length is 0 0.5 meters? And of course, uh, the breadth is 40 centimeters and the height is 21 centimeters. Let's calculate the volume. Can we calculate the volume in this case? Let us calculate now uh, the volume in this case to calculate the volume of the of the cuboid or the, the rectangular uh, prism. Let's check in the uh, in the box, the chat box. Uh, let's see. But uh, so far, there's nothing. Let me give you a hint. The first thing that we must do is to convert. You know, you are going to convert your meters into centimeters. Remember that uh, uh, the height or the length in this case is given by meters, uh, 0 0.5 meters. So you need to convert, firstly, your meters into uh, centimeters. So 0 0.5 meters is going to be equal to how many? Uh, centimeters. Remember that uh, one meter 
is equal to 100 centimeters. So one meter is 100 centimeters. So that is what it is. You multiply by 100. So now we, ne we have to multiply 0 0.5 by uh, 100. So it is very clear in this case that uh, one meter there will be equal to, in fact, 0 0.5 meters will be equal to a half of a, a meter there. And half of one meter will be 50 centimeters. So basically when you, uh, Yes, I see every, uh, uh, Tando has uh, done that to say that is 50 centimeters. And J Pen, great. I can see that you have now used uh, the formula to calculate the volume. And you have said that uh, the volume is length multiplied by the breadth, which in turn is multiplied by the height. So, yes, I agree with you. Thank you very much indeed, uh, 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 J Pen Cuba. Uh, the volume is equal to length times breadth times height. So uh, V is equal to the length there is 50 centimeters and then you multiply that by 40 and then you in turn multiply it by 21. And I see that you've got 42,000 cubic centimeters. Uh, right, uh, Tandongu one as well saying uh, the volume will be equal to the length times breadth times height. And of course, uh, the length is 50 meters multiplied by the breadth, which is 40, multiplied by the height, which is 21, and then 42,000 cubic centimeters. So basically, that will be the amount of space which will be occupied by this cuboid. So that is the space. That's how big uh, the space is in terms of the volume. So if you are going to buy anything with uh, 42,000 cubic centimeters, cubic centimeters, that will be the actual space, which emanates calculated in terms of, you look at the length, as I said, you look at the breadth, and then you look at the height. All right. So Basically, that is what you need. That is what you need, uh, you know, to, to calculate this particular uh, uh, space. And it is done in many ways. You know, there are practi many practical examples that you can think of, uh, not just, uh, you know, when it comes to logistics, but many uh, logistics companies, you know, uh, are able to utilize uh, the volume. You know, they have to calculate the volume if they have to move uh, merchandise or move, uh, you know, goods uh, between towns, uh, you can talk about also furniture stores and so on. If they have to move their goods, uh, the transport that they use and so on, it's very important to understand uh, the capacity uh, because volume goes hand in glove with uh, capacity, and we will come to capacity, which is linked to to the volume at some point. But the key concept here for today is volume, which means how much space a solid can occupy. So the space that can be occupied by this cuboid will be 42,000 cubic centimeters. And sometimes the volume can be in cubic meters. So it depends, uh, you know, on the actual uh, uh, unit of measurements uh, that you are using in a particular given space, right? So that was the first one there which we have done. And now I'm proceeding to go to the second one there. So you can see that in the second one, we have got a cuboid once again, where, uh, you know, the length is 1,5 meters and the height is 0 0,7 meters and the breadth is 1,4 Meters. And I want us to calculate the volume of this particular uh, rectangular uh, prism. Can we use the available information just to calculate the volume? So let's calculate the volume of this particular uh, cuboid, which uh, consists of the length, 
uh, the breadth as well as the height. So we have to now calculate the volume of this cuboid. So what is the volume of the cuboid with the length of 1,5? Uh, Tando Gubani, I can see you got that right. Uh, together with uh, JPEM, I can see JPEM, you have calculated that correctly. And I wish to congratulate you on that. Let us now consider the following example where the cuboid has got the length of 1,5 uh, meters, the height of 0, 0,7 meters, and the breadth of 1,4 meters. Can we calculate the volume in this case? Let's calculate the volume and then be in a position to find the final answer there. Just in the same way that you have done the previous one. Remember, in this case, we have the meters, so you don't have to uh, convert anything. You know, uh, everything is now in the same unit of measurement, so there's no need to convert. Can we carry on just to uh, finalize this uh, particular activity? I hope uh, the, not just for JPEM, uh, but for everyone. Uh, remember that the volume of any a particular cuboid is given by the formula there, where you multiply the length times the breadth multiplied by the height. So I've just put it there just to remind you of the formula. I know that at times it can be confusing, but let me tell you something. If you don't want to memorize, I, I, I think it's not necessary to memorize the formula. Uh, you don't have to memorize any formulas or formula of any cube, be it a cube or cuboid or, or, or be it a, a cylinder and so on. What you need to do or what you need to know is that the volume, you take the area of the base and then you multiply the area with the height. So the, basically that's what you need. Now I see uh, JPEM has just uh, given us the solution. You say that you, ha you have multiplied 1,4. In fact, yes, 1,4 uh, multiplied by 1,5 multiplied by 0, 0,7. Great. So basically, that is what we need. That is what you need. Uh, you just take the length and then you multiply that with the, the breadth as well as multiply everything by, by the height. And this will give you the volume of your cuboid. So the volume of your cuboid in this case is the length multiplied by the breadth multiplied by the height. And this gives you the, the volume. So I hope that we are clearer now this morning in relation to the volume of any uh, cuboid or, or any 3D object. So I'm just going to also remind you, this applies as well to, to the triangular prism. Remember, with, with the triangular prism, you always have the small height. That is the height of the triangle, which is a face of a prism then you also have the bigger height. So as I said, in some textbooks, I'm sure you will see, when you are required to calculate the volume of any triangular prism, you may have to uh, use uh, two heights, the first one being the, the height of the triangle and the height of the prism itself. So please don't forget that. Very important. Now, uh, Yesterday, we calculated the surface areas of these prisms. That is what we did yesterday. But today, I want us to calculate the volume. So we are now going to calculate the volume in these uh, 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 prisms. So the first prism, as you can see, is a triangular prism which is followed by a cube. And then of course, the last one, it's, it's a rectangular prism. So 
we have got three different types of uh, prisms. The, the first one being a triangular prism, which is followed by a cube, and which is called by a cu cuboid. We call it a cuboid or a rectangular prism. So now, once again, as I said to you, there is no need to memorize the formula to calculate any volume there. So let's start with A. So in A, the formula to calculate the volume there will be given by half of the base times the height. So you'll have half of the base and then you multiply that by the small height and thereafter, you multiply everything by the big height. So you can see that uh, JP, there, let's go to everyone now. So in A, I'm just going to put uh, the formula there to calculate the volume. And of course, we we'll set uh, you half of the base, and then you multiply that by the, by the, by the height of uh, the triangle. And thereafter, you multiply everything by the height of the, of the actual prism. So there are two heights. You can see I've got H, which stands for the height of the triangle. And I've got, that's the small H. I also have the bigger H there, the capital letter H, which stands for the height of the prism. So basically, that is what we need. And who can tell me what is the height of the triangle? in A. So the height of the triangle in A there is given by one meter there. So you can see that uh, H, which is small there, is one meter. And then the base, what is the base uh, B? The base is 1,7 meters. That is what the base is. And of course, the height, the height of the prism is 3,2 meters. So basically, the height of the prism will be 3,2 meters. Can we use this particular activity to complete the volume of the triangular prism? So I've given you now the height of the triangle, which as you can see in the board here, the height is one meter. That is the height of the triangle. I've also given you the base of the triangle together with the height of the uh, prism itself. So you making use of this, then I've also given you the formula. Everyone now has got uh, the formula. Remember, I started with the formula. When I started this morning, I showed you some of the examples. The formula to calculate. In my example, though I said uh, it's half of the base multiplied by height one, the first height, and then multiplied by the second height. But I think for the purpose of clarity, let's rather use H, small letter H. Let's use that for the height of a triangle. And the big letter H, let's use it for the height of the actual prism. OK, so basically, all that you need to do now is just to substitute. So you go and check a half. Uh, that is one over two there, and then you open your bracket, then you multiply that by the breadth. Uh, the breadth is 1,7, and then you multiply 1,7 with uh, the height of the triangle, which is one. So you multiply by one, and then also multiply by the height of the, 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 the prism, which is 3,2. So basically, that's what you do. So I see that. Uh, uh, J. Pem Cuba has already done that. You have said it's half of, yes, half of 1,7 multiplied by 1 multiplied by 3,2. Great. And I see you, you have 5,44 as the answer. And if you divide that by 2, you get 2,72 cubic meters. Great. Uh, that is the correct approach, uh, Cuba. That is the correct answer. So the volume. So the volume in this case, the volume of this uh, triangular prism will be uh, 2,72 cubic meters. Remember that this volume is in cubic meters. 
And how do we find it? We look at the different uh, space there, uh, the, the height of the triangle, the base of the triangle, as well as the height of the prism. So basically that's what you need. That's all that you need. Great. Can we now proceed to the second one, which is B? Let's find the volume of that particular prism. Uh, remember, we always say that the cube is the same as a, a rectangular prism. So you might as well use uh, the volume. But I've given you the, 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 the volume for, for the cube when it started. I'm, I'm sure you'll remember that I said that the volume of a, a cube, V, V is equal to S multiplied by S multiplied by side. So side times side times side, that is the volume of the cube. So basically in this case, all you need is just to take your side. And the side, as you can see, is given there by eight millimeters. So the side is equal to eight millimeters. Therefore, it should not be difficult uh, because you just multiply eight and then you multiply it by eight and times eight. So remember that's what you need. And of course, eight times eight will give you 64 and then you multiply 64 by, by eight. What do you get? What is the final volume that you get there? Let's find the volume. Right, I see uh, JPEM has now, uh, yes, uh, I see you've said uh, the volume is S cubed. Great, that is correct. And then you multiply eight by eight, which is 64. And uh, 64 times eight is 512 cubic millimeters. Great, great, that's the perfect example there. Let's now do the last one. Uh, find the volume of the rectangular prism in this case. What is the volume? What is the volume? What is the volume of this particular uh, prism? This is the last one, by the way. Uh, remember the first things that you know you 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 need. Uh, uh, what you need the uh, is just to convert your centimeters to millimeters. Right, yes, uh, Tandim Tempo says uh, 15 centimeters uh, becomes, uh, all right, I see, becomes 150 millimeters, great. So if you convert uh, 15 centimeters to uh, millimeters, then that becomes, uh, of course, it becomes uh, 150. So you can now use it to calculate the volume of the, of this particular uh, shape. So basically length multiplied by breadth and then you multiply everything by the height. Uh, let's see, uh, JPM Cuba saying V is equal to 150 multiplied by 125 multiplied by 32. And the answer that you get there is 600,000 cubic millimeters. Great, that's the correct answer. So I hope you now understand the relationship between the volume of any cube or the volume of the 3D uh, objects together with uh, the surface area. Uh, we will probably find time to talk about the capacity. Once again, this lesson was brought to you by the STEM Digital School in partnership with the Sasol Foundation. 
until we meet again. Thank you very much indeed.